What's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today I am super excited because in this video we're going to be putting together a brand new Ryzen 7000 series gaming PC and this thing is going to be an absolute beast. Now before we get started here I do want to mention that yes these new 7000 series CPUs do have a built-in RDNA 2 iGPU. It's got two CUs so it's not super powerful. And I will have a ton of videos coming up on that, but the early driver that I'm using right now has been giving me some issues, so I got a feeling that if I wait a couple days, I can get a proper driver and just get much better performance. So those videos are on the way. But while I'm waiting on that updated iGPU driver, I figured we could go ahead and get a nice gaming build out of the way with the initial launch of Ryzen 7000. So for this here, we're going to be using the brand new AMD Ryzen 9 7950X. This thing is crazy. We've got 16 cores, 32 threads, and yes, these new CPUs do require a new socket. They're calling it AM5, and I want to give ASRock a big shout out for sending over their X670E Tai Chi motherboard. This thing is absolutely beautiful. It's got everything you need here. And if you're interested in checking this out or other 670 boards that they offer, I will leave links in the description. With the new AM5 socket, we do have to move up to DDR5. And for this build here, I went with 32 gigabytes of Kingston Fury Beast RAM running at 6,000 megahertz. This is the RGB version. So we've got a little bit on the top here. I'm not gonna go overboard with the whole build in RGB. But given that we have 16 cores, 32 threads, and these 7,000 series can pull some wattage, I went with a Deep Cool Castle 360EX. So we've got a 360 millimeter AIO. I have not used this one in the past, but I've taken a look at some reviews. Use. Looks like it should work out pretty well here. Another new feature that's come to AM5 is the exclusion of pins on the CPU. So we no longer have to worry about these on the CPU side of things. Uh, basically, we need to worry about the pins on the motherboard, but this is definitely a welcome change. I've actually ruined a 2400G in the past, dropping it, and I just wasn't able to straighten all the pins out properly. So for me, this is definitely a welcome change, and getting that CPU in the socket is easier than ever. Lines right up. I'm going to go ahead and lock this down. Now I can take the protective cover off. Just comes right off. I mean, you can take it off before you put the CPU in if you want to. But now it's time for the RAM. And as you can see, this ASRock Tai Chi motherboard does have four slots, but we're only going to be utilizing two of them. And like I mentioned, I'm using 32 gigabytes of DDR5 running at 6,000 megahertz here. This is made by Kingston. It's their new Fury Beast line, and I actually used some on an Intel 12th gen build. That was only up to 5200 megahertz, but yeah, it worked out great. And as for storage, it's all gonna be handled by a two terabyte Kingston Fury M.2 NVMe drive. Another thing that this board comes with is a massive NVMe cooler. In my opinion, it's a little overkill, but yeah, it'll definitely keep that M.2 drive cool. You can substitute it for the aluminum plate that's on there right now, but for me, I'm just gonna go right under here. Okay, so now that I have the CPU, RAM, and storage finished up on this motherboard, it's time to put this inside of a case. And with that, I went with one of my favorite cases right now. This is actually the second one that I'll be using. First one was white, did a full AMD build in it, but this is the Dark Flash DLC 29 Full Mesh. You can also opt for tempered glass on the side, but personally, I like the full mesh look, and this will support up to a 360 millimeter AIO up front. You can also go with a 240 in the front or a 240 in the top if you want to. But there's plenty of space here to build in, and personally, I love the look of this thing. So yeah, going together really nicely. Now I need to go ahead and add that AIO up front. And for this, I went with that Deep Cool Castle 360. Now this is one I haven't used before, but I couldn't deny the price on Amazon. I got it for a really good deal, brand new, and reviews look good. I think it should serve its purpose really well. It does come with three 120 millimeter fans, but while piecing everything together, I kind of miscalculated my GPU length. So the only way I'm going to be able to turn this into a full AMD build is if I use low profile fans on the radiator, and I just don't have three of them right now. Originally, I wanted to go with this ASRock Tai Chi RX 6900 XT, but it's just a massive card and won't fit. So for this video, we're going to be going with the Galax RTX 3080 Ti. And yeah, I know this 3080 will outperform the 6900 XT, but I really wanted to run Linux on this machine also. So keep an eye on the channel. I will be installing the 6900 XT and will install SteamOS 3 on this unit. But I think it came out pretty good with the 3080. All right, so let's go ahead and start this thing up. I'm actually really excited to test this new CPU out. And as you can see, we do have a little bit of RGB. And since we've got the full mesh case, even with the side panel on, it peaks out a little bit. 
not overdoing it, and you know I could have went all out with it, done all the fans in RGB. Personally, I think it's still a little too much. We've got it on the GPU. I mean, it came stock like that, the RAM and the cooler. I could always unplug the cooler, but even with the side panel on, given that we have all mesh with this case here, it peeks out a bit and it actually looks pretty good. So I'm running Windows 11 Pro here. We're gonna run some benchmarks. We're gonna test out some PC games and emulation with this new CPU. So let's go ahead and get right into it. All right, so I've got everything set up. All my drivers are installed. As you can see, we've got 16 cores and 32 threads here. This thing is definitely pumping out the power. I've actually seen it hit around 190 watts on the CPU. 32 gigabytes of DDR5 running at 6,000 megahertz. We've also got those integrated Radeon graphics. These are based on RDNA 2, but right now I can't get them to go over 600 megahertz, and that's one of the big reasons I didn't want to do a video on it just yet. So with this, we're using an RTX 3080 Ti. And I mean, with specs like this, we can basically run anything at 4K. With some of the newer AAA stuff on this 3080 Ti, we might need to turn on DLSS, but the games still look great and play amazingly. Now, the first thing I wanted to do was run a couple benchmarks, and first up, we've got Cinebench R23. So I usually don't show this part off, but I just wanted to give you a look real quick at how fast this thing's rendering everything. We've got those 32 threads just pumping it out, and I was really impressed by how well this did. We got a total multi-core score of 38,297. And if you take a look down the list here, it's beaten that Threadripper 2990WX, and that has 32 cores. We're about 8,000 more points than that. And as you can see, the i9-12900K is coming in with around a 27,000 in Cinebench R23. Moving over to Geekbench 5, and remember, there's no overclocking going on here. Single core, 2,197, multi, 21,814. And when it comes down to it, these are the highest scores that I've ever seen out of any CPU I've tested on the channel, be it AMD or Intel. And uh, I'm talking about the single and multi with this unit. This thing is putting the power down. And the final benchmark I ran was 3D Mark Time Spy. I completely understand that this really relies on the GPU, but we still get a CPU score here, and that's coming in at a 15,880. But our total score here with Time Spy is 18,341. Highest score I've seen out of any PC I've ever built. Now it's time to see how this thing handles gaming. And first up, we've got Forza Horizon 5, 4K, Extreme, no resolution scale or anything like that going on. We can get an average of around 88 FPS, and I'd say that's not bad at all at 4K Extreme. It looks absolutely amazing like this. Uh, hello? Parker, Next up, Spider-Man Remastered, 4K, very high, and with the 3080 Ti, I always have to enable DLSS. I've got it set to quality right now, and this is really just because we're at the very high setting. If you go down to high, you don't need any DLSS at 4K, but yeah, even with this set to quality, the game looks great at 4K, very high. And if you take a look at Afterburner, up in the top left-hand corner, you'll see that that Ryzen 9 7950X is pulling around 120 watts with this game. Most of the time, it's around 80 to 90 at 4K with all the games that I tested. Taking a look at Cyberpunk 2077, no ray tracing on, even though we've got that RTX 3080, it's just going to kill performance. We're at 4K Ultra, and even like this, we still need DLSS set to quality. And the final PC game we're going to test here before we move over to some emulation is God of War. We're at 4K Ultra, no DLSS. And you know, I've been playing these games a lot on lower end APUs. I forget how absolutely amazing they look with these Ultra settings at 4K. Alright, so now it's time to move over to some high-end emulation, and I will have more videos coming with the built-in integrated graphics on this and emulation, but first up, PS3, RPCS3, 4K, and up in that resolution really has a lot to do with this 3080 Ti, but this is one of those emulators and games that loves extra cores and threads, and you know, with this, we've got plenty of them. 16 cores, 32 threads, PS3 is going to run great with this new CPU. And uh, I also wanted to take a look at some Xbox 360 using the Xenia emulator. Forza 2, we're right there at around 240 FPS. I do have V-Sync off. We definitely don't need to run it at this kind of FPS. You can lock it at 60 if you want to. 
And this is one of those emulators that really does favor Nvidia, but you do need a powerful CPU to get this kind of frame rate out of it. And I've got one more here for Xbox 360. Red Dead. Now this is a harder one to emulate, and in the past I only had really good luck with Intel, but with this new 7000 series, we're good to go. V-Sync is off, so we can actually play this game at 60 FPS on PC. I mean, this is really great performance. One of the main things I was worried about with this build were CPU temps with this Ryzen 9 7950X. I've seen a lot of people out there stating that this thing runs at around 95 degrees Celsius, and I'm sure I could hit those temps if I continuously ran stress tests on this unit, but under normal loads and even running Cinebench R23 for 10 minutes straight, I didn't see those kind of temps with this deep cool 360mm AIO. Average gaming was around 68 degrees Celsius, and this was 4K gaming. And in both of my Cinebench tests, we only hit 84 degrees Celsius. I was actually really impressed with this cooler here. Especially given the fact that the CPU on average while gaming at 4K is around 91 watts. Now we definitely saw higher wattages come out of this thing with certain games, but across the board, we averaged out to around 91. So in the end, the new Ryzen 9 7950X is turning out to be an absolute powerhouse when it comes to work, gaming, and emulation. I'm really interested in the integrated graphics, but like I mentioned, the driver that I'm using right now just isn't right. We're only up to 600 megahertz on that iGPU, and I know we can go a bit higher. Another thing I'd love to test here is Linux, be it SteamOS or Manjaro. So as soon as my low profile fans come in, I will be installing this RX 6900 XT in this same machine here, and we'll test it out over there. Pretty sure we're gonna see some absolutely amazing Linux gaming with this machine. So if you're interested in seeing the iGPU performance that this thing can put out, some Linux gaming and more emulation, make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn notifications on so you know when I post the next one. But that's going to wrap it up for this video. If you're interested in putting something like this together, I will leave links to everything I used in the description below. And if there's anything else you want to see running on this new Ryzen 7000 series CPU, be it in Windows, Linux, or a different operating system, let me know in the comments. But that's it for this one. And like always, Thanks for watching.